Yes, it's five things you might want to know about The Hateful Eight, or you could just call it five things you already knew about Quentin Tarantino. If you're found guilty, the people of Red Rock will hang you in the town square, and as the hangman, I will perform the execution. And if all those things end up taking place, that's what civilized society calls justice. The Hateful Eight, directed by Quentin Tarantino in starring Kurt Russell as a bounty hunter who has a prisoner, Jennifer Jason Leigh, Samuel L. Jackson's in there, as well as many others. And what happens when they come to a stagecoach stop with four strangers? And the mystery unravels about who they are and what their intentions are. There's a lot going on with Quentin Tarantino films. Is this one of his best? Is it one of his worst? Here's five things you might want to know about The Hateful Eight. Number one. Man, Quentin Tarantino has a good eye for filmmaking. This is a gorgeous movie. Winter can be difficult, and a lot of this is, is shot in snow, in snowy backgrounds. You get all that white, it can kind of mess up the contrast and ability to see depth. But he is shooting this perfectly. Some of the shots of the horses going through the snow, or the people interacting, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. And it continues to be beautiful even once they get to the cabin. Not only does Quentin have a great eye, he's got a great ear as well. One of my favorite parts about Tarantino films are the way he uses music, and it's beautiful and perfect here. There's this thing he does with anachronistic music, music that doesn't fit into the time period. He just knows when to put a modern song, even in an old movie. He also knows, and this is probably key, when to use scoring, like background scoring, to intensify the emotion or to underlay what's going on and to use actual music, you know, actual songs, pop culture songs, things we might know. He gets the difference on how to use those so well. And what's amazing is it all just becomes part of the background and influences you without you even realizing it's there. Number three, a little bit of a warning, and if you already know Tarantino, this is not much of a surprise to you. He's not afraid to use words, all kinds of words, uh, misogynistic words, hateful words, racist words. He just likes the whole entirety of the language to use to tell a story. Now that could be offensive to some, and if that is going to offend you, I should mention the violence as well is graphic like Tarantino does. If that's going to put you off, it's not a movie for you. If you know Tarantino films and you can deal with that kind of stuff, you know what you're in for. But I thought I'd give you fair warning. Let's find some things beyond Quentin Tarantino's direction to talk about, shall we? How about the acting? Really, really good here. I loved Samuel L. Jackson. Loved Kurt Russell, Jennifer Jason Lee giving a great performance here, but the standout for me, and it's kind of strange because it's not a huge role, but I just loved it, was Tim Roth. I really enjoyed his part in this. He encapsulates what Tarantino has done with these actors is to put them in a place where they're obviously not themselves, but they still get to use the tools in their toolbox. And that goes for the actors across the board. And I really thought that worked with him and the others in this movie. There are a lot of great performances here. And finally, number five, the only real negative thing I have to say about the movie. It was a little long and laborious. And I feel like Tarantino has earned the right to tell the story with the pace and the space that he wants to do it. But I feel like this is one where he could have benefited from having somebody looking over his shoulder and going, you know what? Tighten that up. Bring that to just over two hours. Let's get this thing tighter. Because I feel like there were moments where he took his time with things that didn't need that time and spacing. And because of that, took me out of the movie just a little bit for those moments. Overall, though, it is a Quentin Tarantino movie through and through. One of his better ones, in my opinion. I think The Hateful Eight stands up enough to earn itself a B. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. You can check out more about what goes on here by clicking the info button right up in this corner. That'll slide right out while the video is playing and you can check out other reviews that have happened here as well as how to support the channel, how to go to the website, yourmoviefriend.com. If you do podcasts, subscribe to Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P. -P. It's our uh, pop culture podcast. Me and a couple friends talk about movies, television, all sorts of fun stuff there. So subscribe there wherever you do your podcast thing. And if you do Periscope, follow me there, Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. Uh, I periscope when I come right out of movies to kind of have that immediate conversation about how I feel. Really enjoying that. All right, on to the best ever challenge. This is where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify my choice. What is the best Kurt Russell movie? 
ever played a large part in this one. So let's go with Kurt Russell. Um, for mine, my clue is, and this might surprise people that this is my best ever for Kurt Russell. Mine is the one about a sport loved by Canadians, but the movie itself is American through and through. Take a guess at mine in the comments. Leave your answer there as well. By the way, the first person to get mine right does get that point. Thanks, and as always, here's five extra seconds to hit the subscribe button. Just click the logo right down in this corner.